What's up you guys? RC Journey here. We're continuing the build with the WPL C14 Hercules. Now when I left you guys off, I didn't do the chassis part because it was painted. So there she goes. She's all nice and painted, looking pretty. Now what I'm going to end up doing now is going through and making sure I have everything laid out for this part where we're going to hook the links up. Now as you can see I already ended up doing one side. So that's what it's going to look like. The top is going to go on the inside. And then the bottom is just kind of going to almost be level. The bottom gets the bigger hole and the top gets the smaller one. More of a cone shaped. couple guys out there don't have instructions so I want to make sure I give you guys a good look at what's going to be next now I would take apart your transmission I already did mine and make sure that it's nice and lubed and everything's where it needs to be it's the size of the bigger motor on there so should have plenty of power I'm going to drive it around hopefully I'm fairly happy with it now I wanted to show you guys a little shock oiling is what I was going to end up doing with this truck. So I'm going to pop under there and lift up with the flathead. Pop under there and lift up. There's an internal spring in here. And if you fill this full of the grease that they supplied you with, And then go ahead and do a couple of beads up and down the spring. It won't have such a boingy reaction. Because I don't like driving it around when it's bouncing around and you aren't even hitting any bumps. So this will take away some of the bounce to the way it drives. It should ride a lot better. Let's go ahead and fill that up with some grease. Put the cap back on. I already did all four of those, so make sure it's nice and switched around. And it's just a quieter, smoother, and it's not as bouncy, so that'll help the truck. I'm sure it'll help the way it drives a lot. So now the B-1 and the B-24 come with leaf springs, so they naturally ride pretty stiff. So I wanted to make sure that this guy was going to get a nice smooth ride. So now what we're going to do is take that top link. The one with the cone shape. We're going to put it in the top hole. Now three holes need to be towards the back. Three holes meaning that's the back of the truck. So... Don't want you assembling this wrong. Don't want you making any mistakes. Of course you learn from your mistakes. Now I went ahead and put a tiny little bit of grease on this. Because this truck, or these trucks, use plastic as a pivot point. Very often, or as a bearing. And you also want to make sure that's not too tight. You want to make sure that wiggles, falls freely. So, wanted to make sure I lubed everything very well, because you don't want anything binding up. more stuff you have binding up, the harder your suspension's working. And you don't want that. So the one with the thicker hole is going to go on the bottom. And then again, don't put it too tight, because it kind of locks it up in there. So you want it just tight to where it don't wiggle too much. But loose enough to where they dangle. So this is basically what you want it to look like when it's done. Thicker ones on the bottom. Then the cone shaped ones on the top. Make sure they all move freely.
as you see I need to loosen that one up just a little bit same with this one make sure they all move freely I made sure my motor had grease or my transmission had grease on the inside motors mounted nice and well nice and tight and then that sits right in there like that now I got a closer look I guess I just didn't get all the screws because it seems as though I don't have any of those so the result of that was those guys hanging out I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that but all my longer screws are all the same size and last time I left off this wasn't mounted so get a good look at that I think they call it the drag bar it goes all the way across the bottom gets bolted up through the top and then your steering link it hooks up to the servo gets mounted up on the top and they both use number one screws and same with the transmission all right so now that this is assembled and that's assembled we're going to mount this down I guess technically it doesn't have to be mounted down. So we're going to take this. And those go through there like that. So that thicker bottom one is going to go through the axle. And then that's when a shock comes and cups over it. And then you're going to do the same for the rear. And then that's what it should look like. So then after about two or three minutes, this is what you should be looking close to, like, I guess, if everything's right. So I got the shocks on the outside. That's the rear. There's the front. And then these top links are going to swivel around. And go right in there. And same with this one. And then after another couple of minutes, it's starting to look like it can actually do something. Now keep note, these shocks mount on the inside. Or they mount on the outside, but you got to screw them from the inside. So your hardware is coming in from the inside. So... Grab this screw. Give you guys an idea. It's going to go in the second hole. Let's just double check and make sure that's what the instructions are showing, real quick. So keep in mind the three holes are the rear. 
So it's going in the fourth one from the back and then the second one from the front. So then that's what you're going to end up looking like. So not too shabby. Like I said, I mean the whole kit will take no time. I mean, probably within the amount of time of watching a movie. So an hour and a half, maybe two hours if you eat. Take a little break in between. And the motor mount can be mounted separately. So I'm going to go ahead and mount, I guess, the skid. So... Two holes right there, go to the two holes right there. I'm interesting to drive this truck. I think it's gonna drive a lot better and be able to run over more stuff than the military truck. The military truck was limited by the leaf springs, and I mean, obviously, the 130 size motor. So the power was a big issue, but it's all in how much money you want to put into these trucks. Now a kid is right around the same price as a ready to run. So if you just want to get one and drive it around and maybe get the stuff later to upgrade it, I don't blame you. But I've been in the hobby for a very long time, an extremely amount of long time. And uh, so I had the stuff laying around. And it's worth it to me. It's a fun little truck to be able to play with in the inside and how quiet it is and what it can do and what it can't do. Running over shoes. And... PlayStation games and I mean you name it So that's what she's looking like when she's done Not bad I think the truck will drive pretty good. I like that. It's four link as well with the chassis mounted servo so for 40 bucks, I honestly don't think you can beat this. So next, I'll probably end up doing a little more of the front bumper and the grill, along with the electronics cover. And we're going to end up getting it looking like here. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video please like and subscribe and there's a lot more to come.